Hi there. Today we're going to be talking about the program GPS Prune, and I'll be showing you a few things you can do with it. GPS Prune lets you view and edit GPS tracks. So we're going to use it to prepare a route showing where we want to go, and then load it into a GPS receiver. Then the track and its waypoints can be used to navigate while on the move. Here is GPS Prune showing a map that you can drag around and zoom in and out. We're going to use Wikipedia to look for a mountain called Harder and see how hard it is to climb. We can search for the name from the online menu and open the page in the browser to make sure we've got the right one. Then we can load that point into GPS Prune and it appears as a waypoint. We can double click the map to zoom in to see it more clearly and find the nearest train station. Before we start drawing, I'd like to change the maps. There's an official Swiss map which shows the hiking routes nice and clearly, so we'll switch to that. Now we'll draw a track from the station up to the top, using the right-click menu to create a series of points. We don't need to draw it super accurately right now, we can edit it later. Obviously you can do this as carefully as you want, but for now we just want a rough shape. All of the points we're creating are without altitudes, so the profile view at the bottom stays empty for now. OK, now we can look up the altitudes for all these points in one go, to see the profile. And if we select the whole track, then we can see the distance is about 4 kilometers and the climb is about 750 meters. So it's certainly doable. Both those numbers will probably increase a little bit as we add detail later. I'm also going to mark the top funicular station, so we can have that as an option for the way down. When I add a name to this point, it becomes a waypoint with a different symbol and it's shown in the list on the left. Next, we'll activate the edit mode using the hand icon at the top of the window. When we're in edit mode, we can drag the points around and add more detail, so that our line more closely follows the actual path. This will give us more accurate measurements and will help us navigate accurately when we're following it. Again, the new points that we're inserting don't have any altitude values yet, so we're getting gaps in the altitude profile at the bottom of the window. You can take your time with this, zooming in to capture every twist and turn, but it's most important to put points around track junctions or places where the direction changes. Nearly there. OK, that looks better. Now we'll do the altitude lookup again to fill in the gaps in the profile. And as you can see, the distance has gone up a little, and the extra detail has added some extra ups and downs as well, so the climb is a little more than before. As a bonus, we can also show the route in 3D. But first I'm going to add an extra point further up the ridge, just so that that ridge gets included in the 3D view. Now we can start the 3D view. There are a few settings we can choose here to control the appearance. We want to see the terrain, and we'll put map images on the terrain too. We choose a decent resolution, and then it will fetch the altitudes of the whole area to draw the terrain. Pretty cool, huh? There we can get a good impression of the shape of the ridge, and we can spin it around to look from different directions. 
Perhaps this can help us look for an alternative way down or an onward route up. That extra point we added to the ridge top isn't needed anymore, so we can use the undo function to delete it again. That looks good, but maybe we can start our hike from the bus stop instead. Would that make much of a difference? We select from the bus stop to the top. No, it saves a kilometer but doesn't reduce the climb at all, so let's stay with the route from the train station. We can turn off the edit mode now to avoid dragging points by accident. And what will we be able to see from the top? For this we can use Peak Finder, which opens up in a browser window. We select the point we want to view from, and Peak Finder will tell us which mountains we'll be able to see. Let's just zoom out a bit. Wow, that looks great. You can see all the way along the lake. And over there to the south is the Eiger. But I wonder what the weather is going to be like. Again from the online menu, we can ask Open Weather Map for a forecast. Oh. That actually looks a little cold. That's useful to know. What else? Let's also see if there are any geocaches here using open caching. We can get a list of nearby caches and see the details in a separate browser window. Ah, it's a virtual that looks interesting. You have to find a particular sign at the top. So we can add those cache coordinates as a waypoint too, and also add a comment so we know what to look for. Excellent, it looks like the track is ready. To take this track with us, we can export the track as a GPX file and store it directly onto the GPS receiver. We'll give it a name so it can be selected in the receiver's track list. And then store the file in the GPS receiver's GPX directory. And there's the saved file. And that's it. We prepared our track, we measured distances and climbs, and we used several online resources. We saved this track onto the GPS receiver so we can follow it, and we're ready to go. There's plenty more, but for now, thanks for watching.